All right, let's get into it. Something a little different today. One card meal day. Got some cardboard with some rubber bands around it. That's nice. All right. Here he is, Mr. Mickey Grasso of the Washington Senators. And this is an excellent mint six. So I'm gonna take it out of this thing. I'm gonna put it in a perfect fit sleeve eventually, but there you go. So here's the back. All right. So, Mickey Grasso, you know, one of the fun things about collecting vintage, as I've said before, is it introduces you to an era that you may not be all that familiar with. And it also puts everything in context in a way that you may not have anticipated. And that could not be more true than what I discovered about Mickey Grasso. So I'm not gonna tell you guys about his career so much as I am something that Grasso went through. So Grasso played in the late 40s, early 50s, but he actually started before that. And his career, uh, just as it was getting started, kind of got interrupted by World War II. So right around the time that, you know, he was just kind of coming up and, and getting started, Pearl Harbor happened. And so about a month later, the guy enlisted and reported to uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey to begin basic training. So uh, he became Sergeant Grasso and went off to North Africa. And he was in the 34th Infantry Division. In 43, he was actually taken prisoner. So the story goes that when this happened, they were surrounded by like 10,000 troops and howitzers and his lieutenant said, uh, what do you think, Mickey? Should we try to fight him or should we just give up? And Grasso said, man, don't be crazy. And after the war, his manager on the senators, Bucky Harris, heard this story and said, right there, I could have told you right there that Grasso had the makings of a smart catcher. He knew, you know, he knew the situation and he made the right call. Um, so Grasso was put into a camp called Stalag 111B. And he was there with about 6,000 other people for about two years, a little over two years. Um, they were all equipped with a parade ground um, where prisoners had to come twice a day to be counted. They were given access to sports equipment which was uh, provided through the Red Cross. So the US sent over a whole bunch of gloves and bats and balls for the, for the POWs. And so Mickey definitely played baseball. They, you know, they, they had their own sort of uh, way of life in those camps. And, and I think, you know, you can imagine they were basically trying to keep their spirits up as best they could and try to, in some quiet way, retaliate and resist the situation that they were in and you know I really love that I love the idea of baseball um, representing you know the American will to resist what was going on eventually Mickey and some other uh, compatriots tried to escape they they tried three times and failed three times and each time they failed they of course paid for it dearly a lot of beatings and so forth um, and he finally managed to escape on April 20th, 1945. Mickey was one of 10 prisoners who simply ran off while the guards were asleep. And the, the kind of trick that they came up with was to march through the town as though they were a work detail. And they had um, one of the prisoners um, who spoke fluent German pretend to be uh, somebody that was in charge. And so they got away with that. A lot of people bought it and they found a boat and basically crossed the Elbe River to the American side. By the time Mickey and his compatriots were liberated, um, Mickey had lost so much weight. He definitely weighed 60 pounds below his average playing weight. 
not to mention the fact that, you know, um, the physical wear and tear and, and the psychological wear and tear that he had dealt with. Um, anyway, he returns to Trenton, New Jersey, where he was from, and began the long climb through the minor leagues back to Major League Baseball and ultimately ended up initially with the Washington Senators. And from what I can understand, um, he was a big fan favorite in Washington while he played with the Senators. One more interesting tidbit, when I was looking around at this stuff on, on Grasso, around 2010, somebody found a journal that he had kept from his experience in the prison camp. I did manage to find a photograph from the journal online with a picture of Grasso in the prisoner of war camp with some of his comrades. Yeah, just thought that was an interesting story, and it definitely makes me look at this card in a completely different light. And, you know, without trying to get too heavy here, uh, this has already been a, <laughs> a pretty heavy post, but um, when you start to kind of get past the surface, there's a whole lot of history behind these cards, and I always love digging into that and discovering different things about the player. Sometimes it's just an interesting tidbit. Sometimes it's something like this where it's like, okay, Mickey Grasso to me now stands out as a pretty unique guy and, you know, something that I think we can all appreciate. So thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed that, and I look forward to your comments, and I will see you guys online soon.